So this right here is PNP Assist. What it does is it manually helps you by moving the PCB, which I've got one right here, into the center location where then you can just rotate it about your component. Now uh, the great thing about this is not only does it have a component tray on the side, um, it's powered, it tells you what component you're working on, um, and then a little bit of information as well. Um, but it has full full rotation, um, even though it's it's powered through the base right here. Um, one of the great things though is this is a good starting point because if you just wanted to take pieces, you can just use tweezers and put them on there. But a lot of times we end up using uh, suction devices, um, either handheld or motorized. Um, and then there's microscopes and lasers to, to help you aid in, in locating the components. And then even as far as like laptops. But the one thing that I'm never fond of is the fact that you open up a box, everything's loose, um, the orientation's always weird, um, tweezers sometimes pinch and then, then your part goes off into infinity. Um, so I thought, why not take this device and add something around it? So, what I decided to do is inside of a case, um, it's going to get smaller right now, it can't fully close, but inside this case is sort of the exoskeleton of PMP Assist. So here's the exoskeleton all pulled out. I'm just going to show you that here's PMP Assist from before. You can see the carousel here rotates independently from the main axis here. Uh, this can move up and down and rotate side to side. So this this is the start of it. Now, I started off the exoskeleton with these two black bars and these three silver bars. They're all 2020 extrusion. Um, I thought that's since all 3D printers and everything else is pretty much made out of that stuff, it's very highly versatile, um, creates a modular environment, and you can do a lot with it. Um, so stage one, um, there's going to be a lot of different stages, but stage one would be these three bars, these two black bars, and these two 3D, or 3D prints right here. Now, the reason why this bar is back here is for these guys. These guys are all from remixed from a 3D printed project um, where they held um, component tape, uh, like DigiReel, um, in a square volume and then it uh, slotted on a, a specific 3D printed rail. Um, and that way, the, what, what happens is the DigiReel feeds through here, the, um, the tape gets pulled out this way and in the front. So it gets peeled off the top and then when it goes back, it exposes a little tiny, I don't know if it's gonna focus on that, little tiny component. And from there you can pick it out. But I didn't want to have to 3D print all of my rails. I wanted to be able to fit it to something that we all pretty much use. And that's 2020. So from this shape right here, which it's got two knobs right here for the V slot, and then it's got a latching point right here. And then basically, uh, with all the written information, if I can just get that focused. Yeah, all the information here, I can slot this into any position I want along this rail, reconfigure it from each job, and basically, snap it into place. Now from here there's like very little play because of the spring tension or I should say compression at this point um, but I can slide it into different positions and based off of that um, I can have PMP assist 
uh, tell me, based off of potentially some numbers right here, at what point I need to pick component A to put into the slot of component A. Um, this is keyed at the back at the moment, and there is a 3D print right here, and I'm able to just slide this into place. Press down, and it's good to go. Um, also, I need to connect the power cable. And move that into the back. So that's stage one. Stage one allows me to rotate um, PMP assist around the carousel and then have all of this stuff. Now, from there, obviously you can use tweezers, but tweezers are a pain, um, like I mentioned before. So why not just adapt? And there's another uh, Thingiverse open source project where it involves this miniature pump right here uh, and this tube that you can get on Amazon connected to um, a, uh, a glue dispenser tube with a lure lock bent angle tip. Now, the benefit here is now I have a suction tool, um, but most people end up actuating um, the actual suction with pneumatic systems and valves, but the individual uh, thought by turning on and off um, the, the pump and then using a hole in the back to let go of suction and add suction, um, they were able to pick up parts. But what I found was even if you just drill a small hole back here, you can just take a foot pedal and turn the pump on and off. So this is normally open, this is normally closed, or sorry, normally open, then the close the circuits tur turns this on. And it actually creates a really good suction tool. Um, and as soon as I turn it off, because it, uh, there's a tiny hole in here, the uh, vacuum uh, goes away and the part pops into wherever I put it. But by the time I put it on a surface, I turn my foot off and then I let go because the parts now adhere to the surface. Um, so that's, that's stage two. Stage two is adding a vacuum system to this little piece right here. Now, stage three is adding this extrusion here, this extrusion here, an additional 3D printed leg, which is the same as the bottom. And now I have an extra area where I can start adding stuff onto. So one of the things I added was this swing arm right here. The swing arm has a, um, a little uh, magnet, a hinge, and then uh, a stopping point where I can position it into place. But uh, attached onto it is a microscope and then a laser. The laser is what you would get with OpenPMP, or not OpenPMP, PMP Assist. Um, it has a crosshair type laser, um, and this is um, adjustable in the back, but this lines up perfectly with the center along with, well, you can move the 3D print on the rail back and forth this way, but you can also move this 3D print up here. Um, also that is exposed is the focus wheel, and then attached on the bottom is also a LED light where it's dimmable um, using this unit right here. So this this you can find on Amazon for cheap. Um, I just took out the guts, added some 3D printed hinges, and then a bracket right here to hold all everything into place. But obviously it doesn't have to be this. You can just have the laser pointer right here to help assist you where this zero zero point is. Because when you have your PCB on here, it's difficult to determine where the actual component is. So that is stage three. Um, stage four, uh, and preferably it's the last stage at the moment, is I realized that if you wanted to have uh, reference data or any of the bomb tools that are available to show you the full schematics that you can use a laptop, but with a Raspberry Pi 4 running Chrome OS and then a 13.3 inch display, which I think should actually be a 10 inch display, um, runs off of five volts connected via HDMI here. Um, I now have an ability to see all the schematics in front of me 
uh, using the bomb tool, but also have the ability to go in and look up data sheets. But not only that, but in the future, PMP Assist might not have this screen. It's, it could be optional, it could be just gone completely. But the goal would be to have this create its own little website, like the bomb tool, where these two machines can talk to each other. So if I click on a component on the schematic, it will locate it here and I can just click and drag and, and bring it into place. It allows for a lot more information. Um, it also allows us to look up the data sheet at the same time. And it, it also takes away um, the ability to like just have a laptop. Like I don't have to have it right here. I can just have this USB keyboard with a trackball and a, a, a additional USB ports put my my file on here and I'm ready to go. Um, but really what you want to see right now is it turned on and all the functions working. So if I swing the arm back into place and I take my 12 volt 5 amp power supply, uh, I changed to XT30s, or sorry, XT60s. You can't see that. It's an XT60. Um, I fly a lot of drones and stuff, so I have an abundance of those. I find that they're a better connector. Um, once I plug this in, and where is that other lead? Plug this in over here. Everything turns on. So as the Raspberry Pi boots up, I'm just going to turn on the uh, microscope. And you can see right here, I haven't zeroed the machine, so I'm just gonna move this. I know I'm not supposed to do this, but I wanna show you. And I can get zoomed in pretty far on that point right there. And I can focus it to get a better um, ability. Uh, but now what, what I can do is I can adjust the light. And now you can see. gives me a very, very good means of reference data, full schematic layout, where components are gonna be, and then hopefully in the future of PMP Assist, this can talk to that. Um, and so when I click on that component, it could potentially move uh, the device to the rotation point that I want it, um, or other things in the future. Um, but right now, uh, it just allows me to to do this um, and then connected to a keyboard um, I can not only put the file on a flash drive and add it to the keyboard because the keyboard has a USB um, port over here but um, it allows me to, to type up anything I can go to reference sites um, look up component data sheets, whatever I need to do. And just to show you what I mean by uh, the bomb tool, uh, you can see that right here, I've got USB toggle, which has the data on it. Um, I'm able to go over and highlight different components if I need to click on them and it will highlight the component on screen. Um, this way I have reference to what the component name is, even though it's gonna be the same on the screen right here, what the value is and what the footprint size and any other information I would want in it. Um, and then it shows me the location of where it is.